This podcast is not safe for work and will feature movie spoilers. It will feature scenes described of a graphic nature. It will contain language which most listeners may find offensive. Welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. Hi everyone and welcome to the podcast Under the Stairs. I'm your host Duncan McLeish. Welcome to the show. Upon this episode we have a very special interview with director Quarks from his new movie Pandemonium which is about to be released through Arrow Video via their streaming channel as well as physical Blu-ray release 27th of May so that by my recollection when this drops will be tomorrow. It will be available across the platforms and for you to buy and own. On this episode we have that interview but we also have my review so check those time codes, choose wisely upon the journey which you take. I would say listen to the interview, we really went out our way to make sure there was non-spoiler detail in there and if you are concerned about the review I'm also going to try and be as less spoilery as I usually am in my reviews. However, feel free to just hit a pause on that bit, skip to the end, whatever you want to do, go away, check the movie, come back and check out the review at a later date. The control is in your hands and do not say that you haven't been warned. So yeah, Pandemonium is the name of the movie. Interview with director Quarks. He is in France, I am in the UK. Uh, My accent is not confusing at all, Tom, as you'll find out when we get to that interview, which is coming up right after this. Hello, Duncan. Hi, Quartz. How's it going? Uh, very good. Very good. Nice to nice to meet you. Uh, it's a pleasure to meet you. Thank you very much for taking some time out today to chat to me. My pleasure. Thank you for hosting me. Uh, I'll try <laughs> to do my best now uh, with my rusty French English. Huh? So you're gonna have to be uh, patient, maybe with me, but. Uh... I'll do my best. Your accent seems very understandable, uh, so it's good. It's good. It's um, in Scotland. We class this as the old alliance between Scotland and France. So um... you Scottish. Yeah, for for me, Scottish accent is really one of the most complicated accent in the world to understand. <laughs> uh, but uh, I will hold on to it. You you are doing very well, and uh, may I say that your English puts my English to shame. So <laughs> not really, not really. <laughs> um, cool. Uh, let, well, let's let's get into talking about uh, some exciting stuff, which is centered around Pandemonium, which is your brand new movie, which is about to make its way to uh, BOD via the Arrow channel, and it's making its way to Blu-ray for those that are like myself, partial to owning a physical copy of a movie on the 27th of May. Um, talk to me a little bit about this because you have built up a bit of a reputation as being a filmmaker that likes to explore the fantastical, the surreal and, let's be honest, the disturbing visuals. How much of your kind of back catalogue of work and filmmaking did you bring to Pandemonium? Did you feel like this was all leading towards this movie? I understood everything just a bit, little tiny yeah. bit at the end. What was the, what was the, just yeah. the two last yeah. uh, so, words. So your, your style of filmmaking, yes. Um, yes. The, the, the way you construct your movies, yes. um, how do you feel that the movies that you've been making thus far helped you make your new movie? Ah, okay, okay. Well, you know, from my from my background, as I'm, uh, you know, I'm coming from uh, painting. I was a painter for a long time. Uh, mm-hmm. I'm coming back to painting actually. Uh, for a few months ago, I didn't paint for ten years, but I'm going back to it right now. And uh, all the, the the experience that I had, I, I like to make a movie that doesn't really maybe uh, look like the other. You know, I I, I really like to uh, stay on my own path. And mm-hmm. this is exactly what I really did with Pandemonium. And this is actually the genesis of Pandemonium. I make this movie because I needed more uh, creative freedom from the project I was working on just before. Um, my previous film was uh, All the Gods in the Sky. And mm-hmm. 
it was a uh, it was more of a studio film because there was Canal Plus involved and we had a nice budget and everything went really fine. And after that film, uh, I I started writing uh, my upcoming film. But there was so many producers that came on to the uh, uh, came on attaching themselves to the creative process. They mm -hmm. were all giving me their advice and what I should do, what I should not do, and, and this is really not uh, the, the the way I can work. I cannot work like that. So I took a break from it. I said, guys, you know, I I, I just I'm gonna have a nervous breakdown with all that shit, and I'm gonna mm -hmm. get get take a, a year break and I'm going to do my own stuff and uh, this is exactly what I did with uh, with pandemonium I uh, I wanted to stay very indie uh mm -hmm. in, in order to 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 keep that 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 freedom and in order to be able to make the exact film that I had in mind so of course that 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 um, that independence uh, has a cost uh, for sure uh well we we, we didn't have a lot of money but um, but we, we we I mean we just had enough to 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 make uh, to make the movie that I had in mind and uh, it was such a, a, a it was like breathing fresh air really you know uh, to 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 um, to be really your own boss and to 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 do exactly what you want to do sometimes it's good to have some someone like above you to to give you a suggestion and to to direct you maybe if you're doing you know like some nonsense stuff and that can happen uh, here and then but. Uh, it, it was such a such a nice experience to to have that total uh, creativity and uh, that total freedom of uh, doing doing the film that I wanted. It was really really cool. But it was it was a nightmare though putting up uh, putting up this film because it was yeah. so difficult and so complicated in every level. So, but yeah, we're very happy that now we're done, uh, and uh, we are very whole uh, very proud of the film, and it's also uh, working quite well. So it, it was a, a blast of an experience. Yeah, it's one of those things where. It's one of the few art forms, like making movies and being a musician, are maybe the the only two art forms where the the bigger the budget, so the more people that have a say in it, the more suggestions come in, and you kind of have to offset that. If you you know from your painting background, you'll have a visual in your head, and you buy the supplies and you make what's in your head on the canvas, Absolutely. or you. Um, but when it comes to films, trying to get that image that's in your head out on camera requires sometimes quite a lot of money <laughs> um in the case of the, the the kind of distribution that you have with arrow how did that come around was that from the movie playing at festivals and then you approached arrow or arrow approached you or how, how did that relationship start no, it was uh, one of my co-producer, Martin Meloul from Cali Pictures. Um, she has their production company in Los Angeles, and mm -hmm. this is my associate for so many years. We're working together. She's also my agent. Ah. Um, and uh, the meeting, I mean, how we, how did we meet with uh, Caroline from F Film Seekers? That comes really from Martin. And mm -hmm. uh, it was at the, at the Cannes Film Festival uh, two years ago. And uh, we were just, um, well, we were finishing the editing of the film and uh, post-production took ages, uh, yeah. really, to, to, to be, because, well, a lake of money and a mm -hmm. lot of things to do and so many uh, VFX because we had to clean so many stuff that you don't even see in the film, but uh, half of the images are VFX. So uh, oh. we had to, to clean so many stuff. Mm -hmm. and, um, so yeah, Martin um, uh, introduced me to uh, to Caroline uh, to film seekers uh, at the Cannes uh, Film Market uh, two years back, and uh, yes. we clicked uh, very well. She really loved the film, and uh, she, she I think she did a really a very an incredible job. And sometimes it's not always the case uh, with with, with f um, international sales; it, mm -hmm. there can be a lot of problem there. And for me, it was really a great experience to uh, to be able to work with film seekers. What, what do you think it is about French filmmakers, specifically filmmakers in the horror genre, that seem to be able to tap into a, a kind of bizarre level of surrealist horror? Um, I, I think of the, like so many French horror filmmakers, and their version of horror tends to it stays with you as the viewer afterwards. You you ponder what you've seen and you think about it more and more. What do you think it is about French cinema that does that? Is that just something you grow up with as a filmmaker and you're inspired it's a, by? It's, 
It's an interesting point uh, that you're mentioning. Uh, really, honestly, I don't really know. Uh, I never, you know, start writing uh, saying to myself, well, I'm French, so I really got to, you know, stay <laughs> Frenchy, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it's I, I don't think about it. It's really something uh, in my DNA, you know? It's like mm -hmm. I'm trying to tell the stories that I have in me, uh, that I have in me, that I have in my mind, uh, without, well, without, with, with trying not to be too influenced. I, I try not to be too influenced by American movies uh, that that really, you know, sometimes overflow a little bit uh, your brain uh, because there are, you get so many films and then uh, sometimes you can be um, a little bit too influenced. And I, mm -hmm. I really try not to, to do that. And I, I try to uh, stay on my own path. And uh, well, sometimes it works, sometimes it does not. But uh, I, uh, I I like to experiment. Uh, also, uh, and uh, I, I like to stay original and propose mm. um, a film and, and give emotion to the audience in, in, in a way that they are not really um, um, used to to have. You know, it's like I, I I don't like to to use like jump scares of or or like super gory uh, uh, suspenseful scenes. Mm -hmm. It's not really like that. I, I don't take it that way. You know, it's like. Uh, yeah, I, I, but I cannot really uh, answer the bottom line is why is a French, yeah. uh, <laughs> you know, film is is like that. Uh, I, I'm happy that you feel that way, mm -hmm. um, and and sometimes it's true because yeah, we had some we have some very great uh, filmmakers uh, coming from the French new French extremism uh, in the in in, in the, the year 2000. Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we got some great pieces here. But also at the same time, it's very, very complicated in France to work with genre films. It is yeah. really not a, 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 um, a cinema that is helped by a government, uh, governmental funds or uh, or even TV channels. They, they are really frisky about it. They are scared to go that way, and um, uh, and it, it's it's very complicated. My film, well, as for an example, like a real hardcore example, and a sad one a little bit, but it's it's it, that's how it is. My film is uh, being uh, distributed in in twenty or twenty five countries, yeah, uh, but not in France. Uh, so far, and it's a French movie, you know. Uh, I try to defend it because I like to. So many, I have so many proposals to saying, you know, you should do it in English and do your next film in English and use English. But I, I don't really want, you know. I feel very French, yeah. and I like to uh, write dialogues and I like to work with the French comedian and everything. But I don't feel very rewarded, to be honest, in yeah. my own country. And um, that's why probably I will uh, finally, uh, you know, lose myself, and I will probably make the the, the, the upcoming one in English. But uh, it's not. I'm not very happy about it. But uh, yeah, yeah, it's like that. Yeah. It's very complicated. And, and you, you obviously had. You were saying that there was quite a few years between your previous movie. You took some time off, kind of set your mind on your next project worked on a, a smaller budget to deliver what you've delivered um, through. In terms of, in general, how long it takes from you to go from an idea of this is the film I want to make to getting your movie shot, is that typically quite a long time? Or the next movie that you've got in mind, well, do you think that'll move a bit quicker? Or how do you feel oh, well personally? I had uh, well, I, I, I'm working on my uh, fourth feature film right now, mm -hmm. and the, the the three first was actually pretty. I wouldn't say easy, but but pretty easy and, and but pretty easy not to make. <laughs> but, but I mean, I mean to put it, you know, to start uh, the production and and yeah. it was, of course it's always a very complicated nightmare to make a movie. But but Pandemonium, as I was really my own boss, and I I only had private equity. Mm -hmm. And uh, I I I, um, I started to write uh, the, the the script uh, during uh, the COVID period where we were all uh, confined and uh, nobody could yes. uh, go out and everything. So that was really the perfect time to write a film. So I did, and uh, as soon as the the, the COVID a uh, little bit ended and we had to we uh, we were able to escape our own uh, jail cell, uh, I just uh, started preparation and we just shot a few a few weeks later. It was really quick because. Mm -hmm. um, 
I I was I was very happy with the with the script and uh, money was there, so I just had to shoot, you know. And uh, when when you don't have so many entity people advice <laughs> coming on and then producer and 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 you're you're just waiting for your budget and you're just begging, oh please uh, give me a hundred thousand here, give me a hundred thousand there, hundred thousand that usually never comes. And yeah. <laughs> you're just waiting and waiting. Um, so, the, so I didn't have to go through this ordeal with with pandemonium. It was really, really easy. Well, not easy, but really yeah. quick. And that's also what happened with the the previous film, uh, All the Gods in the Sky. Because uh, when I try to um, to produce All the Gods in the Sky at the beginning, it was impossible. All the doors, all the producer, they closed the door on me, saying, "Well, the script is great, but it's well, it's too fucked up, it's too crazy, blah 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 blah." And I, impossible. So I was really pissed off with it because I knew my script was a bomb, and uh, so I did a, a short film. I, I reduced the script to 30 minutes. I mm -hmm. took the core of the of my story, and I did the I did the short film called uh, A Nearly Perfect Blue Sky. And what that, with that short film, we we, we, we went to uh, more than 180 festivals. We won 75 grand prize. We went to Sundance and we went to the best festival in the world. And right after that, it really put a huge spotlight on myself and with the short film. So after that, it was super easy. When I came back from Sundance, I arrived in Paris. I had, a call, I had like three calls on my answering machine and a producer said, how much you want for it to make your, your feature film? I said, well, that's what I want. Well, I had the yeah. money and then <laughs> it was it. But uh, at the same time, I'm telling you that, but uh, I have three uh, upcoming projects mm -hmm. that are in production. And um, one of one of these projects is called uh, The Thing Inside of Me. And uh, it's been four years, four years that we're looking for the money. Mm -hmm. And that, uh, and we want we want best script everywhere. Uh, we want the best script at the beef market. We want best script in CJS. Now I'm getting invited to South Korea, the Busan uh, film market, also to repitch my film for the fourth year. Yeah, yeah. So I'm tired of pitching my film now. I want the money. I want to shoot it, but very difficult, as you can see. Uh, I have another project called uh, Body and Soul, which is a very different. This is one of the most fucked up film you've ever seen in your life. If I can pull it off. It's uh, totally insanely outrageous. It's it's. I think it's. We never. No one has ever come so far in a, in a film. So I think it's pretentious to say that, but I really believe in it. Um, but it's not just like a, a torture porn or without a without a a, a, a sense. Uh, yeah. It's a movie that uh, tells a lot of things. It also gives a lot of emotion to the audience. So that's a very important for me. Not just, uh, I don't like to shock just for the sake of shocking and, yeah. uh, and emptiness. I do not like emptiness. I like uh, I like a deeper meaning uh, on what you're saying. And uh, you have to have a point of view. Um, so that's that, that's also, I have a lot of difficulty to find uh, money because uh, because every every instance or government fund that reads it, they, they, they just collapse, yeah. you know, and they just start freaking out like that and say, but you cannot, you cannot say like this, or you cannot do a film like this, it's just too much. They say, yeah, mm -hmm. it's great. They always say that it's great, but they don't want to give me money so far, but we're still working on it. And there's a third one, which I really believe that I'm going to make because I already have uh, the found. It's going to be also, uh, this one is an, an indie one, and that's why I can do it. Yeah. Uh, uh, with all the the, 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 the money that uh, Pandemonium uh, gave me, I'm gonna reput it everything on the next project. If I don't, uh, if I don't have production for the two first one, you know, which are yeah. more like studio movie because we're looking for two, three mil two or three millions. Yeah. But uh, with my upcoming indie film, if I do it, and because the other one are just uh, in slow motion, uh, then uh, yeah, I will shoot it uh, early 2025. Amazing. Months. Eight months you, you mentioned earlier on, and this, this will be my last question, but you, you mentioned earlier on that you took some time away from painting and you're now returning back to that. I I know quite a lot of like genre filmmakers have that extra creative outlet. The one that sprung to mind when you were talking is like someone like David Lynch has consistently painted along with making movies. Now that you're getting back into painting, do you see yourself continuing with that and the filmmaking or will you take a break from painting when you make movies and then come back, etc.? No, 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 no. Uh, it's not like that. Uh, painting was really my my job, my full my full time mm -hmm. job for 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 eight years. 
Yeah. That was 15 years ago. And I was I was doing quite well, actually. I didn't really like what I was doing as a painter. I thought I was sort of a fraud, but uh, <laughs> but my painting was selling quite well because I had a really, really cool gallery. And uh, when I felt that I was ready uh, to start uh, something new, well, to become a, really a filmmaker mm -hmm. and to jump myself into let's make a movie, uh, I stopped painting. I, I told my galleries, I said, okay, that's it for me now. I'm I'm mm -hmm. done. I'm not going to paint anymore. I'm going to go full, you know, fully into filmmaking. So uh, that's what I did for for all those years. And uh, two two months ago, uh, there was uh, I received a comment uh, uh, like uh, I don't know, an order like I don't yeah, know how to yeah. someone that really wanted a painting from me and offered me like a nice money to do it. I said, okay, I will do it. So I started painting again after. 12 years and uh and i was quite happy with what i did i think i, mm -hmm. I without knowing i improved uh in all the, this this uh, break time you know like and uh i i posted it on the on the internet and there's there's a gallery who called me and who's gonna uh, organize a very very cool exhibition for me in, uh, in september so oh, she wants nice. 10 of those paintings so i'm just producing right now <laughs> you know you can have a little glimpse right there oh wow they're incredible that is a uh, that is what I'm uh, producing right now, and uh, so yeah. <laughs> oh, that, yeah, absolutely phenomenal. Um, I, 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 it's, uh, I, I love the the idea of art being able to be expressed in lots of different ways, um, and it's always great to 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 see someone who starts in one place come back and recapture that enthusiasm for where they start. Um, yeah. I cannot thank you enough for taking the time out to chat to me today and um, like i said before to anyone listening to this at the moment your movie pandemonium will be available on the arrow channel and um, it will be available on vod platforms including apple and prime and um, it will have that important physical release via arrow and that's coming out on the 27th of me this year courts thank you very much for your time i am looking forward to chatting to you down the road on your next project uh, thank you very much. It was a pleasure being uh, with you. Thank you for hosting me, and it yep. was a very nice conversation. So, uh, thank yeah, you. Your English was impeccable. So. Really? Oh, yeah. oh yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> thank you so again. That. Thank you. Cheers, Dan Ken. And uh, you, uh, will, will you will you let me know when that when that's uh, released, or are you gonna? Yes, yes, a hundred percent. So what will happen is this will go out as part of a kind of podcast episode, but it'll be on YouTube. Um, it'll be distributed back to um, Tom that arranged the the call. So if you get a link back to that, what I'll do is I will submit when that goes through him. I will tell him to pass that information okay, back on to you so you have a link to it. Let's do like yeah. that. Yeah. Thanks a lot, then, Ken. Cheers, right, man. Thank you. Bye. Bye, -bye. Ciao. On pense toujours avoir la vie devant soi jusqu'à ce qu'elle s'arrête. La vie après la mort existe. Je suis vraiment mort alors. S'il devait y avoir un doute, je crois qu'il n'y en a plus. C'est le passage vers l'autre monde. On va aller dans un bel endroit et tout ira très bien. Viens. Vous allez tous les deux aller en enfer pour ce que vous m'avez fait. Je suis où J'accompagne les âmes avant qu'elles ne se fassent tourmenter pour l'éternité. Je serai votre accompagnant. Après la mort, il n'y a que l'enfer. Vous êtes complètement fou. La flatterie ne vous mènera nulle part. Je vais être bien là-dedans. de voir la réalité en face. Humanité est mauvaise par nature et doit expier.
And welcome back. So thank you very much to Quartz for that interview. What a fascinating guy. And uh, you've also just seen the trailer for the movie. Let's get into the detail, the body of the review, if you will. Now, like I said in the upfront, I will be doing my utmost here to make sure that I don't really spoil any details. It is a relatively arty affair anyway, so it's kind of difficult to give too much context away. So we are going to try and talk around about it anyway. I'll give you my grade, my thoughts on it anyway, and there you go, we check it. Make out for yourself what you will. But before we get to that, let me give you some details on this movie. As listed in the PR statement given to me, as I read these out from the internet, you will get funny pictures uh, of the movie. I say funny, that's questionable. Uh, you'll get stills from the movie that will display while I read out the details. Director Quarks, who directed All the Gods in the Sky, explores the peculiar welcoming all those hungry for wonder in Pandemonium, a unique cinema blend of fantasy, drama, genre and humour. Nathan, played by Hugo Dillon, and Daniel, played by Arben, you've got a really hard name to pronounce, so I'm going to skip that, are caught in a road accident that kills them both. As they come to grips with their death, Nathan confronts his past and the consequences of his actions. Now trapped in the hellish void of pandemonium, he encounters tortured souls like Janine, played by Marianne Mandevid, a disturbed child, Julia, played by Ophelia Colby, a grief-stricken mother, and Norgal, played by Jean Rosso, a guide of the great void. Will he find a way to escape the torment that awaits him for all eternity? Pandemonium takes the viewer on a chilling journey as three interconnected stories unravel in the macabre exploration of tales depicting fallen souls. From the eccentricities of everyday drama to the realms of supernatural intrigue, each narrative weaves a haunting tapestry that blurs the lines between the mortal and the supernatural. For context on the Blu-ray's content, it'll feature a high-definition 1080p Blu-ray. It'll have uncompressed stereo 5.1 surround sound with French audio and English subtitles. It'll have different textures, a brand new interview with the director Quarks, Tony the Monster, a brand new interview with the writer and director Quarks and special makeup effects supervisor Olivier Alfonso. Uh, filming a real birth, brand new interview with writer-director Quarks sharing a behind-the-scenes look at filming of a birth. Footage from the film's 2023 premiere in Paris, a making of featurette, reversible sleeve featuring original and newly commissioned artwork by Dave Creative, and a double-sided fold-out poster featuring the original and newly commissioned artwork by Dave Creative. Um, illustrative collector's booklet featuring new writings on the film by Anton Bittel and the director's statement and director Hugh and E. Pandemonium will be released on Blu-ray in the UK 27th of May and in the US and Canada 28th of May and it will also be streaming on the Arrow uh, streaming site in the US, UK and Canada from the 27th. So, uh, what did I make of the movie? Uh, to be honest, it kind of blows my mind that this is a more humble, <laughs> like smaller affair for the director himself, as you heard in the interview, he talked about the kind of lengthy process it took to actually get this one off the ground and how the compromises he had made on maybe previous projects had led him to go a little bit more insular and you would think generally that would be single set location and a more kind of taut script and if anything I think his scope quarks that is as a director has gone grander i mean what is more grand than the concepts um and futilities of life death and consequence and he seems to capture that really really well it's not untrodden story before though if you have seen movies or read fiction uh, the, the the kind of concept of uh, purgatory the, the 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 parts that lie in between life and death that cause our judgment between the afterlife of heaven or hell are are, are kind of well-trodden territory and i think quarks does enough here to bring his inspiration specifically his artistic mind this is a movie that at times you can tell that he comes from a painting background specifically when you're looking at his depiction of pandemonium itself which feels like um i don't even know if he'd seen this movie and it would be interesting to have asked in a non-spoiler fashion but the, the actual image itself is very much of uh, Filch's Beyond um, and that painting at the end where the characters find themselves trapped in that kind of purgatory state. It's almost identical to how this filmic shot 
all that scene actually looks for our characters, so I, I really enjoyed that aspect. Ultimately, what you have here is a kind of story anthology with linking connecting tissue about a guy who is you know, is dead and struggling with his place in the afterlife, um, but stumbling across three likewise souls in their position as well. And then you get the stories that unfold. I will say this, I always feel that when watching anthologies, you're usually setting yourself up for, this is the interesting one, this is the funny one, this is the boring one. And that's why I don't really like anthologies. I always kind of feel with anthologies there's going to be at least one story in there that I don't connect with, I don't enjoy, and I'm going to have to slog through it to get to other stuff. And I also type, kind of feel that sometimes when anthologies are created, and I keep referring to this as an anthology because it is basically three stories housed within one linking story. That to me is an anthology. Um, in the case of this one, what I found actually was that he managed to deliver three stories which were, yes, fantastical, but weirdly grounded in the realms of belief, specifically in the, the kind of second full story, which kind of hit with me. The, the acting is on point all the way through this, including the, the inclusion of child actors, which is always a risky business when you're making movies, but I thought that was done well. I think the practical effects are absolutely awesome, specifically those around creature effects and makeup. Like, very much spot on. He didn't have a huge sum of money to make this movie, but it has went to the right places for sure. It's abstract. It has to be um, for what it's dealing with. It has a kind of art house sensibility. It kind of has to be because of the subject matter in which it's dealing with. But I think he manages to hold a very, very good grasp over this. He's an interesting filmmaker. When watching this movie, it's hard not to see like shades of kind of David Lynch, a little bit of Gaspar Noe, you certainly get a little bit of that French extremity that seems to work its way through into here, but it's dealing with lofty concepts, not too, sim not too dissimilar to like the concepts uh, put out in Martyrs by Pascal Logier. You're getting these, the, the, the concept of what is life, what is consequence, and how our actions, whether we perceive as being noble are not noble, are binary decisions of one zero out with our control anyway. I didn't ask him about religion, but it is curious that in this movie it does paint a very, um, a very neutral position on the, the elements of heaven and hell, to the point that I would think he probably did grow up somewhat religious, um, but hasn't necessarily taken that position in making movies, which is also great. I don't want to be preached to in a movie. I kind of just want to take it in and absorb it. I think he does a really, really, really good job at that here. I think pacing is another thing that just stands out for me on Pandemonium. It's about an hour and 35, an hour and 38 minutes long. By the time you chop off the credits either side, you're really looking at about an hour and a half. And for three kind of stories and a little bit of link on either side, it actually holds together really, really well. I also think as well, what it does in a fun way is it continually makes you go back over the stories that you see and take slightly different perspectives as it retells the story with more context. That kind of feels like a little bit of a Gaspar Noe trick, but you get unfolded a story, then you get unfolded the background, and then more context around the story, and then he utilises that technique again with finality, and that works really, really, really well. I think overall, the big things that stood out to me were for a guy who has essentially had a great deal of success with his previous movie under a studio system and kind of self-financing through like backers directly to make his movie you would kind of think that through covid and all the the issues that have kind of come out there that that would maybe limit his imagination limit the extent in which he wants to kind of stretch his creative ability i actually think the freedom that he's been afforded with that has allowed him to really carefully craft his budget and actually get as much of that on the screen. Yes, it's fantastical. Yes, at times the movie goes into the realms of the absurd, but that's fine when dealing with a subject matter you have, and specifically when you garner more information around what's happening. 
to the characters. It finishes in a very dark place. I mean, this is a movie that, out with small moments of surreal humour, is relatively dark throughout its runtime and finishes in a way where you're kind of left with a, a not full understanding of what overall the ending actually means, but also a feeling that it's a definite end to the movie, which I applaud. The, the amount of times I watch a movie and it's abstract at the end and I'm like, why did we choose to finish there? Like, we could have just maybe done another five minutes, done a little bit more context and still left it relatively in the air, but more final. This one here had finality in the final shot, which I, I, I really enjoyed. Uh, scoring's really well done, effects really well done, actors and scripts very well done, uh, runtime good. So yeah, I think my only slight against this one is maybe that it, it's kind of covering ground that I feel other filmmakers have done, but maybe not necessarily in the realms that this guy's done it. I think it's a super strong entry, and one that I certainly, you know, it's already on pre-order for me anyway, but I'm kind of glad that I got a chance to sit down and check out before that release comes in. Looking forward to digging through those special features. As you heard in the interview, he's got plenty to say, and he appears to have quite a few things in the pipeline, which is exciting as well to know. I'm giving this movie a 4 out of 5. I think it is really good. I think it's worthwhile for those that like their cinema a little bit darker, as a lot of French horror cinema is. But I would say, moreover on that, if you're looking for something that isn't just A to B to C, something that is a bit more playful with the way it actually constructs its story, but ultimately one that is definitely, like reading those things where it says it's genre, to me this is a horror movie. <laughs> like, yeah, it goes into drama, but the drama goes into is dark and horrific. Yes, it goes into fantasy. The fantasy it goes into is dark and horrific. It's definitely a horror movie, and I think this guy is a unique voice in that, that realm. And once again, in addition to the, the phenomenal French horror directors, of which there are many, that I just continue to churn away and plug out stuff there. So yeah, this one gets a 4 out of 5 from me. Now, like I said, in the upfronts, this gets a release uh, in the UK on Blu-ray on the 27th of May. From the press statement, you can find it gets a physical release in the US and Canada on the 28th of May. But as of tomorrow, 27th of May, you'll be able to check this out on the Arrow platform where you can go, I think you, can, I think you still can sign up free uh, and get like about a week or something of Arrow. Um, so why not just do that? Use your free time, go on, check it out, see what you make of it, and then you can always cancel your membership afterwards if you are that way inclined. So huge thanks to Fetch the PR company for setting me up with a copy and to Quarks for that brilliant interview. That's everything for this episode. Thank you very much for checking it out. Um, the podcast under the stairs will be back tomorrow with uh, the long-awaited catch up of our 88 films italian collection series so all that's left for me to say is thank you for checking out this video like and subscribe leave a comment have you checked out this movie what did you make of it are you looking forward to it and if so what of what i said made you interested to check it out but like and subscribe on the video hit the bell if you want to make sure that you're notified every time i drop a new video if you're checking us out on spotify or on the anchor app then answer the question that pops up at the end of the episode subscribe there as well and lastly to my listeners that are old school running the podcatchers out there uh, yeah subscribe to this feed it is the best way to check out the over 1300 episodes podcast under the stairs that i have out there for you plus all the new stuff that's coming out as well so please do that and wherever you are whatever the time zone is and whatever you're up to in this big bad world of ours please take care of yourselves out there this is duncan mcleish broadcasting live from under the stairs and i am signing off